Dom here from Essential RC. Thanks for tuning in for an update on my restoration of the Chris Golds Concorde that I acquired five or six weeks ago, I think. Um, so this was built by Chris in the late 1990s and first flew in the early 2000s, I think, uh, and has been in storage ever since. So I was very lucky to acquire it. It's a one-off. It were, he built it from a pencil sketch kind of drawings. There's no plans exist for this thing um, because I found a thread on RC Universe where people were asking, you know, how do I get plans for this thing? And plans did not exist. He literally did this from his own creativity and innovation. He had a reputation um, for building these fantastic one-off models and, and having plans for a lot of them that you could acquire at the time and probably still can. Um, but he was also a very accomplished full-size jet pilot as well. As I said in the earlier video, he flew the English Electric Lightning, for example. He was also a very accomplished artist, aviation artist. And if you do a search, a Google search, you'll probably find a few of his pictures that are out there. So lucky to have acquired this model, uh, but it needed a few changes making to it to bring it up the, the electronics up to more modern spec uh, and that's what i've been working on so you join me here in uh, essential rc hq who am i kidding uh, this is my conservatory slash dining room that my partner has said i can use for doing aero modeling projects over the christmas period because friends family and the in-laws will not be coming over because of the pandemic and lockdown and being, you know, in a tier two zone and, and all that business. Every cloud has a silver lining. I'll take that. Uh, and I've got a stack of projects to work on. I've got another Chris Gold uh, model to work on and restore. Going to show you that soon. I've got several head tracked FPV projects going. Several products have been sent by uh, Banggood, for example, to do and Hobby King to do reviews of as well. So it's going to be a really busy Christmas on the Essential RC uh, channel. And I'm hoping some of the guys like um, James and Jason and Carl are going to be helping out as well. We're going to keep them busy. So I'm going to show you some of the updates that I've made to this fantastic Concorde to get it ready for its remade and flight in the very near future. So starting on top, there wasn't really anything to do except give the model a good clean but what I will share if you didn't pick it up from the last video or didn't watch it was that this uh, fuselage is in two sections this whole model wouldn't fit into my transit van unless it was in two pieces and I checked that before I acquired it actually that I could transport it it's important to do that when you buy big models but uh, this slides off there are four locating pins that slot it for alignment into this, this section. And there are two wood screws that go in above and below to secure it before you fly it. There's only one electrical connection to make and that's for the nose droop servo that goes through to the receiver that's in, in there. So the, the one thing that did come out of this forward nose section is this big NICAD battery that was what Chris was using to power the receiver and the servos back in the day, uh, but not the modern approach to do it. I wanted to use lithium polymer pack, and that's why I acquired one of these Jetty SBEX. So it can take six to 42 volts and regulate down to what you set up on the side here. So I'll do five and a half or six volts, and it has a switch on it as well. But um, I've already balanced the model, so I could choose from a variety of lithium polymer packs to make sure that I'm replacing some of the weight that this would have uh, had in the, in the nose to get the CG correct. So I've done that, and I think what I've got in there at the moment is a three cell 2500 pack to make sure that it balances properly with the two 4S 5,000 packs that I'm going to have under the belly and the replacement motor fan system that I've got in place now. And I'll talk about that next. So replacement power system, a bit of story here. I was intending to fly this on the original five blade 70 millimeter 
I think Wemotech fans that were on in here. And I had a bit of, we've full disclosure, had a bit of a disaster because this was flight ready a few weeks ago. And we went down to a disused airfield to try and fly this for the first time. I'd flown my free wing Gripen for the, for, you know, for the second time, had a successful flight with that and then prepped uh, this Concorde ready for its re-maiden and uh, gave a nice eloquent introduction and then set off taxi, fast taxi, and then was intending to go full power and take off. And you know what happens to fans when they ingest something and you hear that terrible noise? Well, that's what happened to all four of the fans. What I'd kind of forgotten was that these intakes are so close to the ground and there were stones on the runway. The intakes for the Gripen are quite a bit higher up, so didn't have a problem, but literally stones got ingested through all each of those intakes and destroyed each of the five blade 70 millimeter fans. So I, it took me a, a couple of weeks to recover from that, I'll be honest. I was really, really disappointed. But I got onto George at 4 max, and uh, I told him what I needed. And these are Power Fun 70mm 12-blade fans. And I've worked out, based on the spec, that combined power, I'm going to get twice the power which will give me almost one-to-one -one thrust ratio with these new fans, which will be awesome. It should get into the air quite quickly. Unfortunately, the now what is really important with fans is that you don't you, you can't just leave them like that. You have to have a thrust tube that takes the X exit uh, diameter down to a level two maximize the thrust that you get from the power from that fan so Chris had these that were made from thin plastic material and they don't they didn't they don't fit they don't fit over the fans unfortunately um, so I got on to James I gave him the measurements my good friend James and he 3d printed me this which does fit over quite nicely with no modification so a couple of screws to hold that in place and I'm popping over to his place later today to pick up the other three that he's been printing overnight thanks to him for that so that's the fan system the power system good news on that front the other big thing that I did was replaced the servos and the linkages for this now I think originally let I me mean, I could be wrong here but these are split Ele and these elevons are split. Now, I'm not sure why that is. It may be because Chris was thinking of one of them being for f a, being a flap. I don't know. Maybe originally. But certainly when I got the model, he was using these, well, by modern standards, these are horrible. These are super, super tech minis, um, analog, analog servos. And the this on well on this side was the the rod that was connecting. You know, it's it's pretty horrible wire actually, and very easy to to bend with these these plastic clevises, which actually snapped when I uh, took it apart. So I'm kind of glad that I'm replacing it. the The one on the other side just fell apart actually. The two pieces of wire just fell apart. So God knows what it would have done in the air. But um, so that's gone, been replaced by High Talk Digital in here and replaced this with this three millimeter threaded setup here. Really, really rigid, no slop. And I think that's really important, particularly when you've just got two control surfaces for control. I think that's very, very important. So that's that done. 
Good news that the, the retracts all work absolutely fine. A bit about, you know, 80 PSI pressure and these work fine. They're, it's um, air down and then spring up. So if I ran out of pressure, air pressure, that I put into the system before flight, if I lose that, then these spring down automatically. Fantastic. The 70 amp speed controllers, this particular, the particular Jetty version of these Jetty speed controllers are not made anymore. They progressed to a version two or a version three now. No great surprise over 20 years. These work fine with those motors, which was good. So I didn't have to uh, sp spend anything to replace those. Looking under here, which is where the batteries are gonna go. There were lots of hooks in here, uh, I think for rubber bands, which is what Chris was using to secure the batteries. Um, I changed to XT90s and took out all those hooks, put in some Velcro and some Velcro straps. That'll all work fine. Left these kind of intakes here, no bad thing to actually pull in the air to cool the batteries. And these heat sinks, he's obviously glued on top of the speed controllers to keep those nice and cool. Maybe, yeah, I don't know why though, maybe he was, he was really worried about the, uh, the temperature the speed controllers could get up to. Not sure. Uh, and then moving forward again, uh, the, I, I guess a small concern I've got is that this is quite a spindly setup, a little bit flexible. And the only place I've got to test fly is my local model flying club that is grass. Uh, I don't have any other choice. There are just no tarmac asphalt runways around here. And I'm certainly not going to them to that original disused airfield and risking stones going through the intakes again. So it's, it's off grass or, or nothing. And I think with the power that I've got now, 12 pounds of thrust from those four fans, I think it should get in the air, even off grass, if it's dry. So my, my big LiPo is in there, or big 3S2500, uh, to get the CG. Now here's the interesting thing, the center of gravity. Can you see that here? So Chris obviously originally went with the calculated CG as here, that position quite far back, but moved it at least an inch forward to this point. So I have balanced on that point, if not a little behind with the packs in there, two 4S5000 packs and that 3S2500 pack in the nose. And it balances more or less on that, if not slightly behind. So I think that's it. Those are the, the things that I've done. Not too much, I have to say, in the scheme of things. So I'm really hoping this does fly nicely the first time we, we, uh, we try and get it back in the air, or the second time, actually. So thanks very much for tuning in for this update on the Chris Gold's Concorde. And I'm really hoping the next video will show us getting it back up in the air and cruising around, you know, nicely and having a nice high alpha high alpha landing so see you next time thanks for watching you might want to subscribe if you do click that bell icon for notifications of our future uploads cheers